Having presented the nature and properties of soil, we are now focusing our attention on the consequences of manipulating soils for growing plants. We've already seen that one major consequence of soil manipulation is the possibility of compaction. In this unit, we address another consequence of soil manipulation, that of erosion. From an agricultural perspective, erosion is the wearing away of the surface soil by wind, moving water, or other means. However, erosion is an intrinsic natural process that has a dramatic impact on the land. The power of water and wind as forces of erosion can be seen in the Grand Canyon in northern Arizona. The waters of the Colorado River cut through the Kaibab Plateau but wind and rainfall are responsible for the sculpture of the canyon walls. Freezing, thawing, plants, animals and microbes help by breaking up the rock. Although it is still forming, the Grand Canyon, in its present state, is at least five million years old. The forces of erosion clearly give rise to magnificent structures. Years of wind and water erosion have created the beautiful views of a place like Bryce Canyon in Utah. But soil erosion across much of the USA may look a lot less spectacular than the Grand Canyon, but it still occurs, and it involves some pretty prodigious numbers, as well as the same basic forces of rain, water, wind, freezing, thawing are at work. On this map, showing total wind erosion across the United States in 1997, note that each dot, either blue for water erosion or red for wind erosion, represents 200,000 tons of soil. Each dot. These are indeed prodigious numbers. Cultivation removes existing vegetation, including the roots that tend to hold soil together, and exposes the soil surface. Cultivation results in a finer structure or tilth that is good for plant growth. However, the fine tilth is more easily displaced by wind or water than disturbed than undisturbed soil. Cultivation also reduces soil organic matter over time and this reduces aggregate stability. Cultivation is most likely to promote soil erosion in arid and semi-arid regions. But let's step back a second and consider a historical note. There was a pivotal event in our recent history that demonstrated the dramatic impact of erosion in our society. Increased demand and prices for wheat during and after World War I promoted increased production of winter wheat in the American Great Plains. Farmers practiced summer following with frequent cultivation to remove all vegetation. This conserved summer rains for the subsequent wheat crop. The system worked well, but from 1931 to 1939 the rains didn't come. The Dust Bowl years were the worst drought in U.S. history, affecting 75% of the country, particularly the southern Great Plains, including the states of Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico. Livelihoods were shattered, farms were lost, and as many as 200,000 people were displaced or left homeless. The winds removed trillions of tons of the region's fertile topsoil and sent it airborne as far away as the eastern seaboard. By the late 1930s, the newly formed Soil Conservation Service was helping to reduce loss of topsoil. The Dust Bowl years alerted the country to the pivotal importance of proper soil management to avoid erosion. So let's look now then at uh, methods by which erosion occur and let's see how water may cause soil erosion. A raindrop falling on bare soil, a bare moist cultivated soil, 
carries enough force to degrade soil structure and the, subse and the subsequent splash begins soil movement which continues with surface runoff. Because water does not easily penetrate compacted soils, they are particularly prone to surface runoff and erosion. Water movement begins as sheet erosion, removing thin surface layers of soil. This may not be noticeable, but nutrients and soil productivity are lost. As runoff increases, small channels or rills develop. Rills continue to widen as soil particles are carried away by running water. Cultivation can temporarily remove rills, but they tend to reform with subsequent rains or irrigation. Severe soil erosion by water results in the formation of gullies. Now, plant cover tends to slow the rate of flow of water across the soil surface and reduces the rate of erosion. The data shown here demonstrates how the regular cultivation and management of fields for annual crop production causes much higher rates of soil loss and its consequent reduction in longevity. Erosion is most serious on bare ground and is minimal with thick sod, ground cover, or sulfur surface litter or mulch. Large row crops tend to leave bare ground exposed between the rows and are more prone to erosion than smaller irregularly placed crops. Bare ground may be unavoidable for extended periods such as during construction and before the installation of landscapes. Fences to trap runoff are mandatory on many large projects. Soil erosion can be particularly severe in high rainfall regions such as the tropical rainforests after clear cutting to export timber or prepare the way for agriculture or other industries. Surface runoff and erosion are influenced by slope. If we consider an arbitrary slope and a quantity of sediment that is washed off, illustrated here by the gray block, as runoff velocity increases twofold, shown by an increase in the angle of slope here, the result is that 32 times more soil can be transported by this change in slope. Likewise, doubling the length of a 9% slope would increase soil movement 2.6 times. So clearly, slope of the land has a significant influence on movement of sediment by water. Although aspects of slope vary substantially among U.S. farmlands, the severest slopes to be planted in this country are most likely associated with landscapes or turf. For instance, consider the special problem of stabilizing the soil around highway overpasses and bridges. Now, no matter how fast or how far they travel, soil particles will eventually settle out from wind and water. About 4 billion tons of sediment are deposited annually across the U.S. It is evident from the map that large amounts of sediment flow into the Mississippi River Basin as shown by the areas in red in the midsection of the country. About half of that material is carried in streams and rivers and about a quarter, that is around one billion tons per year, reaches tidewater and is deposited in river de deltas. Lands receiving sediment deposits may be improved or degraded depending upon the coarseness of material being deposited, the rate at which it is deposited, and the depth of deposition. Silt and fine sand are typically less damaging than coarse sand and gravel. In addition, the beneficial or detrimental effects of sediment may depend upon the level of nutrients, 
pesticides and other pollutants associated with the deposits. The materials are deposited when the speed of the flowing water is no longer sufficient to keep the particles suspended. The deposition of soil is called silting. River systems which deposit fine textured soil to delta regions or floodplains often enrich the soil in the area of deposition to the benefit of agricultural systems. Historically, the River Nile flooded yearly, depositing nutrient-rich alluvium on the fields, supporting life on the great Egyptian civilization. Since the construction of the Aswan Dam in the 1960s, upriver from the Nile Delta, flooding has been greatly reduced. Its beneficial soil deposition nearly eliminated, and agriculture in the Delta has been negatively affected. But sediments carried by rivers is by no means entirely beneficial. Nutrients and other chemicals associated with sediment can have far-reaching effects on aquatic ecosystems. The dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico is an 8,000 square mile region of water that is low in oxygen and cannot support life. This problem of hypoxia, the very low levels of dissolved oxygen, is a downstream effect of fertilizers used for agriculture in the Mississippi River watershed. Nitrogen is the major culprit flowing into the Gulf and spurring the growth of algae. Animals called zooplankton eat the algae, excreting pellets that sink to the bottom like tiny stones. This organic matter decays in a process that depletes the water of oxygen. Another consequence of particle movements is that sediment deposits can block drainage ditches, stream channels, and eventually fill reservoirs. This ends part one of soil ero erosion.